There's an inner thing in every man. Do you know this thing, my friend? It has withstood the blows of a million years and will do so to the end. It was born when time did not exist and it grew up out of life. It cut down evil strangling veins like a slicing searing knife. It lit fires when fires were not and burnt the mind of men, tempering leaden hearts to steel from the time the time began. It wept by the waters of Babylon and when all men were a loss. It screeched in writhing agony, and it hung bleeding from the cross. It died in Rome by land and sword and defiant cruel array, when the deathly word was Spartacus along the Appian Way. It marched with what the tailors poor, and frightened lord and king, and it was emblazoned in their deathly stir, as ere a living thing. It smiled in holy innocence before conquistadors of old, so meek and tame and unaware of the deathly power of gold. It burst forth through pitiful Paris streets and stormed the old Bastille and marched upon the serpent's head and crushed it neath its heel. It died in blood on buffalo plains and starved by moons of rain. Its heart was buried and wounded knee, but it will come to rise again. It screamed along by Kerry Lakes as it knelt upon the ground and it died in great defiance as they coldly shut it down. It is found in every light of hope. It knows no bounds nor space. It has risen in red and black and white. It is there in every race. It lies in the hearts of heroes dead. It screams in Terence's eyes. It has reached the peaks of mountain high. It comes searing across the skies. It lights the dark of this prison cell. It thunders forth its might. It is the undauntable thought, my friend, that thought that says I am right. When I began to read about Bobby Sands and what our brothers were doing there, I see that. And then when I learned of uh, the Gaelic language, of their slogan, Chucky Our Law, we will have our day, I think our struggles are common you know, in that in the, in the name of Chucky Our Law, Mitakuyasin, it's the same. We will have our day too. And we were told uh, long ago that we would see America come and go. I often wondered what generation that would be. What would be the signs that we would see America in its failing times? And I think we're in that. And I think that this kind of exploitation is more recognizable and identifiable and the cultures are getting stronger and beginning to realize it's about your own survival and not about America so much. But the more pollution there is, the more cancer there is. So you begin to see a nation dying from within more than anything else. And the, the family unit has fallen apart so much that there is no more family. And they, yet they keep talking about family values. It's long gone. They, the, the people who move away from their own families and they never see them. People die lonely people wherever they are. But in the Indian teaching, we're, we're taught to stay and keep with the, the extended family. Mitakyapi, 
my relatives in Ireland. Chazemita Kankiduta Dakota Oyati Hemi Yelo. I'd like to extend my greeting and introduce myself as you know me and when I met you as Red Crow. Many years have passed since I spoke with many of you and especially the special meeting with Jerry Adams and also at a later time a special meeting with Martin McGinnis. We are all in a struggle in this world. And I think we are committed to our own personal struggles, no matter what the time takes, no matter how long it takes. Our ancestors told us and gave us directions on how we should view our responsibilities and our objectives. And I'm very happy to have lived in this time, to have met some of the great leaders of your people, of Sinn Féin leadership. It was my honor to be part of bringing our, our drum over there with our kids <clears throat> in our survival school. And I remember the day we were singing the drum outside of our Mog prison. And uh, British troops came and put the guns on us and told us to leave and we didn't even move. What were they going to do right there? But we finished our song. And that song rang out through that prison, I understand, to everybody in there. And then meeting you, Jerry, and when you told us your first statement that you wanted to apologize to us Indian people because so many more Irish people killed more Indians than anybody else when the frontier was being extended into Lakota, Dakota land. That's because Irish people were frontline troops of the, of the king's army. They're still being used that way, but in different forms. But we know your people and many of your people here, and Irish people are just as beautiful as anybody else. And we, we share a lot of good future memories in our struggles together. I've been to Amazon jungle in Brazil and spoke to leaders there, Indian leaders. I've been to Hawaii and I've been to Central and South America and uh, South Pacific Islands. And there's a larger struggle going on for all of us. And I think our, our ways are part of a diverse world that needs respect. Our ways need respect much like yours. And as my thoughts continue on about how you are today in your health, I want to wish you good health at this time. And I would like to just sing a very special song for all, all of you and your people and your loved ones. Waka taka u wanik te ye. Waka taka u wanik te ye. Wanik te ye. Waka taka u wanik te ye. Hey yo, hey ye, hey ye, hey ye. Waka taka.